Hey everyone, uh, thanks for joining me tonight for uh, the t uh, episode 29 of Gear Talk. Uh, gear Talk is the show that I do every other week uh, where I get to talk about gear, uh, all the skating stuff that uh, I really get to geek out about. Um, thanks for joining me. I do this every other week on YouTube uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, it is uh, a lot of fun. Uh, if you are available, uh, come and join the chat. It's always great to get questions from uh, people and be able to talk with people who are watching live. Um, if you are in the chat, make sure that you mention me in your comments so that I can get your question. Uh, it'll show up with a little red outline around it so that I'll be able to see them. Um, I do highly recommend that you uh, answer, ask questions. Um, I'd love to... Uh, hear what you have to say, and if you have anything that's been on your mind the last couple of weeks that you haven't been able to get answers on, or uh, that you know just bugging you about, and you might want to uh, uh, get a second opinion, um, I am more than happy to talk. So uh, please uh, feel free to ask questions. I'd be more than happy to talk. Um, so uh, tonight, uh, get right underway. First of all, every week uh, that I do gear talk, I always like to talk about current setups. Um, today I am uh, currently skating the uh, Rosie's Fifth Element still uh, for my aggressive setup. Uh, where is it? Right here on the shelf. So uh, here is the Rosie's Fifth Element. So um, I've been skating these for about a month now off and on. Uh, it isn't one of those... Uh, one of those times of the year that I have enough uh, free time to skate as much as I'd like. You know, I was able to skate this weekend. It was my birthday weekend, and I try to do um, my you know birthday challenge every year. Um, but the weekend before I was out of town, the weekend before that I was out of town, so it's really difficult for me to find time during the summer to skate. But these are holding up pretty well. Um, Still skating the balance frame, still have the uh, 5888 samples, and still skating uh, with the juice blocks. The uh, eyelet issue. So a couple weeks ago, I talked about this in Gear Talk, and I think I talked about it a little bit on the podcast, where the eyelets of the, uh, the lacing system have been popping out a little bit. And I don't know what's causing that. There's a couple eyelets that have popped out. This one only has one. The other one has two eyelets. So I wrote to uh, my local skate shop, Oak City, and I said, hey, is this a known issue? Like, is this just me? And they say, yeah, it's a known issue. More than happy to help you out. So they took down my information and they got in touch with Rosie's and Rosie's actually sent me new shells. So here are the new shells. Um, so it took a couple of days for these shells to get in. The... Um, they came in a box with a self-addressed stamped envelope, so I was able to re uh, return them. Uh, as soon as I'm done with this show, I'm probably going to skate them this weekend again so that I don't have to break in a new skate before I finish that birthday challenge. But as soon as I'm done with that, I'm going to swap them out and return them to Rosie's. Um, they look exactly the same. So I don't see any difference between these shells and the one that I'm currently skating. My gut says that I'm still going to pull out these eyelets, unfortunately. I don't know that there's an easy solution for this problem. I mean, they just don't look. I can already see where they're popping out. I mean, I don't. I don't think they're they're, they're designed for this. I think because this is a dual injection material and because this lacing area is so soft, I think this plastic it just wiggles too much, and because it wiggles, it expands, and when it expands and people tighten down their laces, you know, the dual injection thing is really neat because you can tighten your laces a lot and it gives you a really good fit. But that also means that the laces are going to pop out because you're gonna tie your skates tighter. And I really like the fit of these skates. Now that I've gotten used to them and I'm able to find out the way that they should skate and they should feel for me, I'm really liking them. I think that the sole plate is amazing. I think that the feel is amazing. I love the memory buckle. I think that they're great skates. The problem is, of course, if this liner is always going to be a problem, it's going to be a problem for everyone. So uh, going to swap these out and uh, replace them uh, next weekend. 
that will be um, hopefully the end of it and I should be able to uh, have no more problems with the, the eyelets. We'll see. But um, it's great that Rosie's is listening to it and that they replied so quickly uh, with these uh, new boots. I don't know that they're going to fix the problem, but I have a good feeling about Rosie's being able to take care of me if I have a problem again. So thank you, Rosie's. Um, as for big wheel skating, so I haven't done any urban lately. Typically, I use my uh, Aeon 72s for urban skating. I was uh, playing around with my um, my 80 mil frames today on the Seva. I have some Seva CJs with the 80 mil ground control frames, the large frames, and uh, I was playing around with those today, but it doesn't really count. Um, I am going to do some distance skating. So I haven't done distance skating a long time. Um, nothing over 80 mil and nothing really over 72. It's been a very aggressive, very urban summer. Partly because it's been really wet outside and the ground is just not super fun to skate on. Especially this trail that I go to where the puddles kind of stick around for a while. We did have a little bit of rain last night, but it looks like it's going to be pretty dry for the rest of the week. So I'm going to set up my uh, Flying Eagles and go skate with some 110s. So these are the Flying Eagles that I skate. These are the Flying Eagle F7s. They are a uh, free skate boot. They have the same dual injection style that Rosie's has. However, we were talking about that lacing issue. They don't use eyelets in the dual injection. If you look, they actually have these little things that rivet into the dual injection. They're riveted, right? No, they're not riveted. They have like this washer thing that fits around the backside of it. So it's not going anywhere. These aren't going to pull out. But the lacing doesn't even touch it. The lacing has its own little dedicated space. I think that's the way to do it. That's the way to get around this dual injection issue. That's what they should have done. Anyway, um, so I am going to skate these this weekend. They are uh, with the supersonic frame. This is a slightly longer. It says 9.8 inch. I think it's like a 255, 256 length. The problem that I had with the shorter 110 frames, like the PowerSide Imperial, was that the wheelbase was short. It's usually like anywhere between a 243 and a 246. And for me, as a size 10 and a half foot, I want something that's a little longer than that. I don't want something that's less than 260 or so, 250. So this is a much better frame for me. It's longer. It gives me a much better wheelbase, a much better feel. I am going to swap out the wheels. So today, actually, uh, just a few hours ago, we got our first shipment of Compass 110 millimeter wheels. So here they are. Uh, these are the 110 Carboro wheels. Carboro is a city in North Carolina. It's right outside of Chapel Hill. And it is where I do most of my big wheel skating when I'm hanging out with Dylan. The, uh, the roads there are really bad. Um, it's an old like mill town where they used to have trains coming in and they would mill like fabrics and um, I don't know what the heck they would mill. Like what, what do you mill? Trees and stuff like that? I don't even know what milling is all about. But it's a mill town. There's a lot of mills. There's a lot of places that are backed up to railroad stops where they bring material in and they do something with the material and they ship it out. They don't do that anymore, but the streets and such are still in pretty bad shape. A um, lot of rough terrain. They have converted a lot of the train um, lines, the railroad lines, into paths. But the paths are more designed for bikes and not really designed for blading. These 110s make all the difference, though. So I'm super excited to get these out there. They're 110 mil. They're 85A. They're available now at skateeverywhere.com if you want to get them direct. They'll be at your favorite skate shop sometime next week. And I will definitely have a video this weekend, weather permitting. If it rains for some unforeseen reason, um, I'm not going to be able to get a video out. But I'm pretty excited to get out and skate these. They're going to be really fun. Uh, 110 is a really big size. I actually prefer hundreds for just normal skating. But if I'm skating distance, 110 is probably the right size. So I will report back and let you know how they are. Um, Make sure to check out the uh, channel over the weekend and uh, see if I post a new video.
So those are my current skates. Um, super excited about this week. Um, I had a friend, I actually couldn't find, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. I couldn't find your message. And for whatever reason, these came in from a Goodwill package. So it didn't really have a, uh, a name on them, but um, thank you so much for sending them. These were a, um, a, a listener subscriber who was uh, searching around and found these crazy skates and wanted me to have them. So I'm super thrilled to share with you tonight uh, the V-Form hockey skates. Get a load of these things. So these are, um, these are called V-Form. Um, these are not broken. Uh, they might look like they're broken, but um, they're actually designed <laughs> to have the wheels all counter like this. And I don't really know why. It's so weird to me. Like, why would, I mean, I don't know. So these came out in the late 90s. Um, they were designed for roller hockey. And in fact, V-Form, this company, um, sponsored the Professional Roller Hockey League, which was a short-lived league of roller hockey that came out, I think it was 98 through 2000. So it was three years, maybe a little longer. They played roller hockey, not indoors, but outdoors on the beach. So it was in Huntington Beach, which is the city that I used to live in, actually. I wasn't living there then. Maybe I was. I think I was living there then. So I might have seen this rink. Actually, I might have seen this. I think I saw this rink. So it was right at the end of Beach Street, I think, Main Street. It was right at the end of Main and Pacificos Highway, PCH. And it was something else. So there was a rink out on the beach. And the people who were playing would wear these skates. These are hockey skates designed for very specific... Uh, I honestly don't know. I don't know what these were designed for. I mean, they do the job, I guess, but very different setup. So, um, so the Pro Hockey League was really weird. It had different rules than regular hockey. First, it played with a ball instead of a puck. So, you know, regular ice hockey, you play with a puck. Roller hockey, you play with a puck-like object. It's a puck, but it's got like little plastic indentations and little like, I don't know if it's UHMW or what, some, some hard plastic that lets it slide a lot. So they play with a puck puck. These guys played with a ball. The rules were a little different. There were a few different face-off spots and there was like a place where you could, like if you got a penalty, there wasn't a penalty box. I think you just took a uh, a, 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 like a penalty shot against the goalie. It was really weird. The craziest thing was at the end of each of the, um, the red lines um, or the goal lines, so at the, at the boards behind the goalie, instead of just having the boards where they would have these rounded, you know, boards, like if you shoot the puck in, it would just kind of whoosh, coast around. They had a quarter pipe. So I, I'm, I'm not lying to you. If you Google um, pro beach hockey, I think, professional beach hockey, I think, you can see this rink. And at the end of each of the rinks, there was a, a quarter pipe. So you could shoot the puck, the ball, I guess. And if you missed, the ball would come fly up and then fly back down. If you were coming, like if you were chasing the puck on an icing call or something like that, you could jump up and hit the quarter pipe and do whatever you wanted to so bizarre, right? Why would anybody want to do that with a roller? I mean, it was obviously a gimmick, right? Just like these skates. These are obviously a gimmick. But that's what they were doing back then. So a little bit of tech specs about these skates. Um, first of all, these are a 4 by 76 setup. So this is 76 millimeters. They're actually 76A as well. Fairly soft. I don't know what roller hockey is supposed to be. 76 is probably standard for roller hockey. I know when you're skating on like sport court where it's kind of a slippery surface, like a plastic surface, you want a softer wheel. This is probably expected for what they were skating on. So 76 mil, 76A. These are a size, I don't know what size they are. Oh, size 10. So I might actually be able to fit into these. I don't know that I want to. But these are a size 10, so um, you know I might be able to fit into them. The 
interesting thing about these is that they are a fairly short wheelbase. So if you look at the rocker, it's super weird, but this front wheel is actually further out. Is it still a 76? These are all 76, yeah, 76, 77, 77, 77. So this is worn out pretty well, but it looks like the same wheels. It was probably a 76 as well. Um, this was pushed out a little bit more than these two. So it's really hard to see, but these wheels, because they're cantered, because they're one is diagonal and diagonal and diagonal, they can get them a little closer so they won't rub because they're not actually in a line. The pivot point, the area where they mount is actually outside. Such a crazy concept. But you couldn't put, like, I don't have any, like a knife or something like that, but you couldn't slide something in between because the wheels actually overlap a little bit in the back. They don't in the front, which is interesting, but that means this wheelbase has got to be super short. I mean, it's 76 times 3 minus maybe a couple mil. Ah, that's like a 230 wheelbase. I don't know my maths, but... Probably super short. I mean, I don't have any. Do I have any frames here? I have this frame. I don't know what size this is. This looks like a large. So this is like 270. That's so much bigger. Oh my God. So yeah, 270 for a size 10. And then here, these guys are sporting like a 230, something like that. That's crazy. Yeah, I don't know what they were thinking with this. I think it was more just a cash grab. You know, we, we, we had an idea. There's a neat trend. Let's see if we can get something out of it. But get a load of this. So it's super familiar now. Um, if you were following the news, in the last couple of weeks, K2 had to issue a recall for some of their skates. And these were the VOS skates. I think that's what they were called. The... K2 skate had, you know, normally a skate frame um, where the wheels mount have the axle that goes all the way through the frame. So the frame is just this channel and the wheel goes in the channel and then the axle goes through the wheel, through the channel, one wall, wheel, other wall. The K2 frame, just like this frame, only had one side of a channel. So the frame, the wheel would mount onto the skate with just one axle. So the axle would go through the frame and then it would bolt into the wheel itself. That's how these work. So they have an axle that goes through and it bolts into the wheel itself. There's no frame wall on the outside. It's a, uh, a back and forth sort of setup. And K2 actually just had to recall them because people were complaining that the axles were getting loose they were losing axles and they would lose a wheel. Things were getting stuck in there. It was, I mean, it's not a really good design. You, I think you need to protect your wheels. You don't want to get stuff stuck in there. I don't know how many people actually skated these V-forms. Aside from the, uh, the pro roller uh, hockey championship, I don't know, league. Um, I never saw them in the wild. This is the only pair that I've ever held. And... Uh, I don't think they were that popular, but I did a little bit of searching and I found that there were a lot of conversations back then, uh, conversations on the Reddit in you know the, the more recent years asking whatever happened to V-Form, conversations back in the days on Usenet asking about them. I don't <laughs> I mean, I think they kind of missed the point of what an inline skate is supposed to be. Like, why not just put all of this, the wheels in line? What does this, what does this provide? Like the, the wheelbase is still going to be straight. I don't, I don't get it. Anyway, um, that is the V-form. I don't see this ever coming back. <laughs> I don't think that it's a technology that needs to be um, reborn or rediscovered. I think that this is fine living in the vault. Um, thank you so much for sending them. I think it's been an interesting topic to look into. But yeah, I hope that we never make them again. I think these are really bad skates and a really bad design for anything. I don't, I don't see any purpose of this aside from... Uh, just making a gimmicky skate. All right. Uh, so thank you all for joining tonight. Um, 
It's going to be a pretty short one tonight. I don't have a ton of topics to talk about. Usually I have a laundry list of things. Uh, but this week, you know, it's been a pretty quiet week the last couple of weeks. We did report a podcast over the weekend, so I was able to get a lot of that information out during the podcast. If you do have questions, though, I'd love to answer them in the chat. I do have a couple other things that I wanted to share with you tonight. Um, but I'm always down to uh, answer questions. So please, if you do have questions, let me know. I'm going to go through right now and see what's going on. Um, all right, so there's a question from Braxton. Uh, hey, Lawrence, I'm skating stock K2 Unnaturals, and I want to change the frames. Should I buy a whole new pair of skates or just frames? I want Kaiser Element 2s for the aluminum. Uh, hey, Braxton, thanks for watching and thanks for the uh, comment. Um, I don't know. So do you need to change your boots? No, you don't need to change your boots. Um, the K2 Unnaturals are UFS. What that means is that they support the UFS standard, which is the aggressive skate standard for frame mounting. Um, there are a few different standards out there. UFS is the one that is primarily for aggressive skating. UFS is this. So it is a flat frame setup. It has two holes that are 167 millimeters apart. Each of the holes has a uh, 20 millimeter radius uh, diameter and um, three millimeters deep. And they use an M6 bolt. So that is the standard. If you have something like that, you can make a UFS frame. Your unnaturals have a UFS mount. So you would be able to pull off those stock unnatural frames and put on your Kaiser Element 2s, no problem. Um, should you? I don't know. Um, the problem that I would see with the Kaiser Element 2s on those skates is that those skates are fairly stiff. I don't think that you need to go buy new ones, but they are a fairly stiff skate. It really depends on what you want to skate. I don't know why you're switching out the frames, but the aluminum is going to be really rigid. So you're going to have a really solid responsive skate after this. Might be really good for coping and skating transitions and bowls and stuff. Um, the unnatural was kind of designed as a vert skate. So a lot of vert skaters really liked the unnatural because it really gives them a strong um, supportive feeling. I think that's great. And if you're able to skate those, then more power to you. Um, personally, I skate street a lot. So first, the unnatural isn't a huge, great boot for me. And secondly, I wouldn't really be interested in the uh, Element 2s. But if you are skating a skate park, and if you're doing mostly coping grinds, probably a really good setup. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that the Element 2s have a recessed wheel so the number one and four wheels, if you set them up the way that they're intended to be set up, which I think is the 68 mils on the outside and 60s on the inside, I think, you're going to have to modify your soles a little bit to make room for the 68. So the 68 wheels actually reach up inside the channel, and you're going to have to grind out a little bit of that. I could be completely wrong. I know that that's how you have to do it with the wish frames. I've never held the Element 2s in hand, so I don't know for sure. But you might need to make some modifications to your boot in order to fit those with the biggest wheels possible. But you might want to look into that. There's nothing keeping you from putting those Element 2s on your skates, though. Um, I think that the Unnaturals aren't the best skate for me. But they might be a good skate for you, especially if you've been skating them for a while and you broke them in. If you're interested in doing a lot of skate parks and stuff, they're probably really good. And I think those Element 2s are probably a really good choice for that. Uh, Christopher Pauly. Hey, Chris. Uh, do you have the interior measurements of your Aeons? I assume they're mediums. I don't, and I don't know that I have my measuring tool out here. Um, I can definitely do that for next show. These are the Aeons. These are a size 4344 shell, I think. Is that right? Yeah. These are the 4344. 
I don't have the um, I don't have any measuring tools out here. I wasn't planning on doing any measuring this week. I should probably just always have it available. Um, I will measure them after the show, and I will post in um, uh, the Slack, I guess, and let you know. Um, from a sizing perspective, um, I don't know what you're interested in, but for me, they fit great. My foot is a 28.5. They, let me unlock them a little bit. Get this uh, cuff out of here. All right. God, I love the Aeons. They're such great skates. Um, this shell is pretty big, and I think there's a lot of room up here for your feet. The way that the toe is, it's also very wide. So if you get a liner that fits you nice, you should probably you could probably fit them in. I don't know if you're interested in downsizing or what your sizing question is, but I think they fit pretty true to size. Um, I'm feeling around in there now, and there's plenty of room up front for me with a size 10 liner. This is the, I think the 910 liner. Um, which goes all the way up to 28.5. And I've never felt cramped in my Aeons. I always feel like they fit me really nicely. My money is on these Aeons being around 29.5 from front to back with the internal shell. But again, I haven't measured them, so I can definitely get my ruler and uh, measure them for tomorrow or uh, next time. Uh, Guam Tech, what and how do you plan on recording footage while you're at Woodward this year? I don't think I've ever talked about Woodward here. That would be a pretty good topic, actually. Let me let me talk about, a little bit about Woodward. Um, so for some of you who don't know, um, Woodward is a skate camp. So back in the days when we were growing up, we always dreamed about going to Woodward. I'm putting these aeons together while I'm talking, so I'm sorry I put it... Put it in backwards, so let me adjust it. Um, we always dreamed about going to Woodward. Woodward was like Disneyland for skaters, where you would just go and you would just have the, is it backwards? What the heck am I doing? I'm putting it backwards. It's hard to do while I'm, uh, while I'm talking. Um, Woodward is the sort of place that you would just go and you would just, it's like your dreams come true. Um, everything that you want to skate is there. So um, even back in the days, there was, street courses, there were mini ramps, there were vert ramps, there were rails, there were stairs. Over the years, it's gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, the original Woodward was out in Woodward, Pennsylvania, and they expanded to Lake Owen, which was up in Minnesota, I think. Um, and recently they opened up the Woodward East, which is out in I can't remember the name, but it's outside of Bakersfield uh, in California. Um, maybe like an hour from Bakersfield. It's like in the Valley area. I've been to Woodward East. I've never been to Woodward. Oh, I'm sorry, Woodward West. I've never been to Woodward East. And when I went to Woodward West, I never got to skate. So Woodward was a camp growing up. You know, they had weekly camp during summer for action sports. So you could go as a BMXer or as a rollerblader or as a skateboarder and learn from professionals how to skate better. And it was a whole week of all that you do out there is skate. And you have fun, of course. There were activities. There were pools and lakes to swim in and things like that. But really, it was the sort of place that you would go. My daughter is at camp right now. And, you know, she's writing letters about how much fun it is to do archery and go camping and things like that. And it's like the sort of thing that you would do at Woodward, but swap out the outdoor stuff for skating stuff. What kid growing up in the 90s didn't want to go to Woodward? That's the question. If you were a skateboarder, if you were a rollerblader, you wanted to go to Woodward. Now, obviously, I grew up in California. So Woodward wasn't really an option for me. You know, I, I, I had been out to, you know, I think my family took me to Disney World once when I was a kid. And I remember going to a, a New Orleans trip once, which was probably the only two times that I ever made it past the Mississippi River. Every other time it was, you know, West Coast. I, I know that we, you know, hung out mostly in California, went to New Mexico a couple of times, but 
Really, that was really it. So getting all the way out to the East Coast, let alone Pennsylvania, let alone this middle of Amish country, Pennsylvania, would have been really difficult. And my family didn't want to spend a lot of money on us. <laughs> so we didn't have money for summer camps. You know, we would always hang out at the house or we would do local rec, you know, baseball leagues or something like that during the week. Boy Scout camp, things like that. Um, so I never got the opportunity to go to Woodward. A lot of my friends did. Um, some of my friends got to be counselors there. Some of my friends, you know, moved there. I mean, Cameron, um, my friend Cameron Card moved out there after being a counselor for a while and, uh, you know, pretty much lives in Woodward. And I always wanted to go. Um, so when I moved out to the East Coast, um, you know, it's only a eight hour drive or so from here to Woodward, which is still a long drive and it's a full day drive, but it's not too bad. The local skate shop, Oak City Skate Shop, does trips up there for Woodward weekends. And they do it when the camp isn't open. So I think camp starts in, you know, end of May and it ends in like middle of August or something like that. When the, you know, kids go back, of course. When they're back at school, they don't have camp. So any of those other weekends, they can have weekends at Woodward. And you can rent out cabins and you can skate because the ramps aren't going anywhere. It's not like they take them down in the winter and then they put them up in the summer. And they've been doing trips over the last few years. And I've never been able to go on any of the trips. I've been invited, but it's really hard to get out of family obligations, right? You know, I love hanging out with my kids and just dropping, you know, at the seat of a, the, uh, just dropping everything and heading out to Woodward um, was never really an option. However, last year they opened up a weekend of Woodward for inland skating and it was called what year is it so this is the first event that they've ever had out at Woodward that was just inline um, at least in recent memory and they open up the cabins they open up the lodge they rent out the rooms and they say come on out um, here's how much each of them uh, the rooms cost you can stay in the room you can stay in the lodge you can stay in the cabin and skate all weekend um, and it was a huge success last year. I think there were like 300 people that showed up. Amazing response. Uh, I actually was booked to go out last year, but my wife started a new job and it was a really bad timing. So it was her first week at work and I couldn't leave. So I was here uh, while some of my friends went and they had amazing stories to tell. This year I get to go. So it is September 20th. Um, I'm going to be driving from here with my friend Rob Harrington. We're going to head on up. We're going to hang out uh, for the weekend at Woodward, and we're going to drive back on Sunday. And I'm definitely going to document everything. I mean, this is one of those dream trips for me. This is something that I've been thinking about since I was a kid. So I've done a few travel vlogs in the past, and I'm probably going to do the same thing this time. Um... When I went out to Southern California, I did a travel vlog. And what that basically meant was I captured everything. So I brought a camera with me and I would just create an edit based around everything that happens to me throughout the trip. So it might not be all about skating. It might just be interesting things that I've seen along the way. It might be me on an airplane, things like that. I mean, nothing special, but... Um, I want to capture my experience because I know that a lot of people would love to go, but not a lot of people get to go. So I'm going to start with a travel vlog. I think I'll have a camera, my normal um, uh, vlogging camera, which uh, you know isn't great, but it's a fine vlogging camera. Um, I'm going to bring that with me. I'm going to bring my normal setup, which is my Yi uh, uh, 4K+. Plus. Um, which is the camera that I use for most of the back to blading videos. I will probably bring my 360 camera. I have an instant 360 X, which is an amazing camera for doing follow cam and, um, individual skating. I will be skating with that over the weekend, um, on the trail and see what some 360 cam looks like on the trail. I've done some selfie stick camera work in the past on the trail. And it came out really good. I'm really curious to see what the 360 camera looks like. And I think with all of the people around, I might actually post a 360 video 
So instead of cropping down the 360 video to a single pane, I might actually post the raw 360 so that you guys can see what Woodward was like through my eyes, right? Through 360 of my eyes. I think that's going to be really cool. And I'll skate around so that you could see everybody that's there, go through all of the little courses. I'll bring some big wheels so that it's nice and smooth. I think that would be really fun. Um, and then we might do some live streams. You know, I don't know if there's going to be good cell service there or Wi-Fi, but I think there might be some events that I'd like to live stream. Um, if not, just check in with everybody, especially on the YouTube. It's always fun to do live streams. And I love, you know, just like Gear Talk, I love chatting with people. Um, there's going to be so many skaters there that I love featuring other skaters. I love showing how, <coughs> excuse me, I love showing how amazing the blading community is. And whenever I get around skaters, I want to feature them. You know, I skate by myself so much that you guys are probably, you know, you know what to expect with me. You know, you know what I'm going to do. You know my tricks and everything. Being able to see other skaters, especially good skaters, is going to be a real treat. So I don't know the whole story yet. I don't know what I'm going to do. I've kind of storyboarded out a few ideas. I definitely want to capture a lot of video over the weekend though, and I will be sharing everything that I can to the channel. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure that you do. This is the end of September. It's gonna be September 20th through the 22nd. We'll be doing some live streams there for sure, and then the videos will probably post the following week. Shortly after that, we'll be going out to Blading Cup, and Blading Cup I think is the first week of November. So it's like a month and a half after, what year is it? Uh, after the Woodward trip. So there will be a lot of travel videos coming up. I'll be able to get really comfortable with my 360 cam with my vlogging on the Woodward trip. And I'm gonna really uh, pump out some good content, I hope, some good videos when I get out to uh, Blading Cup, which is gonna be in California. I'm planning on heading down to San Diego this year. You know, last year I did the Orange County thing. This year I'm planning on doing San Diego, so. I hope that I have enough time. I'm really excited about the trips and uh, I hope that you'll subscribe and, uh, and watch the videos with me and uh, always leave comments. I love reading your comments. Thanks, that was a great question. Uh, Scott Molly uh, went to Woodward back in 97, 98. Yeah, again, it was one of those things that uh, everybody wanted to go to Woodward. It, I mean, you're, I'm extremely jealous that you were able to. Um, it seems perfect. I mean, it's one of those things if you wanted to get better as a skater, if you just wanted to have fun in summer, um, I mean, you really can't go wrong. So I'm super excited. I can't wait. All right. Um, one last thing, and then I'm going to get out. I actually got some new skates. So um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to skate them this weekend or if it's going to be next weekend. I kind of want to do some big wheeling this weekend. Um, and then I'm going to try to finish up my birthday thing this weekend. So I've got two things going on that I can't really get out of. So I'm pretty booked. But I got some new skates for testing. I'm going to show them to you and uh, let you see what I'm going to be putting myself into. All right, so here's the box. I guarantee you guys have never seen these before. So these are the Blade Runner Advantage Pro XTs. Oh, what the heck? Blade Runner Advantage Pro XT. So these are it's funny coming from talking about, you know, the Seba CJs and talking about the Flying Eagle F7s and the Rossi's Fifth Elements. These are very different. So these are the most popular inline skates on Amazon. <laughs> they were 60 bucks. <laughs> so um, I'm... <laughs> I'm really curious. I want to see what these are like. So I'm going to make a video about them. Um, you know, I think that skating is awesome and more people skating is better for skating. So 
I want to make a review of these skates and let people know who might be interested in getting them, who are looking for reviews for these skates, if they are worth their time and if there's something better that they should do. You know, 60 bucks, I think they're list for 80. I think I got them for 60. That's not a lot of money for people to invest if they want to get into rollerblading. And these might be a good first step. They got really good reviews on Amazon. They're obviously really popular on Amazon. They're weird. So these are made by Blade, powered by Rollerblade, made by Blade Runner. And um, I mean, they look like very cheap skates. They have a built-in, like a soft boot style um, liner. That is a liner that's basically just bolted into the boot itself, into the shell itself. This whole area, I think this cuff moves. Yeah, the cuff moves a little bit, which is kind of cool. But this whole bottom half, including the frame, is all one piece, riveted onto this little plastic area. There's like one rivet in the middle, and then it looks like four rivets on the outside, one in the middle here as well. I am not expecting much from these skates, but I think it's gonna make an incredible video. People buy these skates. These skates are the most popular skates on Amazon. Why? Like, is it just the cheapness? Is it the brand? Is it that they see the word rollerblade on it? I don't know. So I'm going to give them a shot. Um, they come with four by 80 mil wheels. These are 80 mil and they're 78A. I don't know how good these are, but they look okay. Um, the bearings actually spin pretty well. I think they come with ABEC 5s, which is good. Good. I mean, it's better than the ABEC 3s that we used to have, right? Um, it has the 45 degree strap. It has the buckle. Everything looks and feels fairly cheap, but I think that's the point. You know, if you're paying 60 bucks for a pair of skates, you're not going to expect much. For somebody who just wanted to try that rollerblading thing, these might be a good option. You know, very low commitment. Um, I spend more on a set of wheels than I do on this complete set. <laughs> that's saying a lot but maybe they're okay so i'm gonna give them a shot and see what i think um you know how i do my reviews so i'm gonna be completely honest about them if they're not good i'm gonna let people know and i'm gonna probably let people know if they got these skates what to do next how to make them better you know if these bearings are okay maybe you upgrade the wheels if the wheels are okay maybe you i don't know you can't really do much for the inside maybe you get a new insole i don't know what the insole is like on this thing kind of oh it's it's detachable so yeah i mean that you could upgrade the insole maybe really curious so i hope i don't break them i hope that they hold up um i think ultimately it's going to be a great video i'm going to work on it over the next couple of weeks and uh you know we'll be posting it to the channel so uh stay tuned for that but based on this i might do some other videos around it you know i love aggressive i love doing big wheeling but I realize that there are people out there who don't want to do aggressive, who just want to go out and skate. I want to see if I can help those people get into skating because more people skating means more skaters. More skaters means more money for companies to grow, more companies to pay their riders, more companies to invest in new products. I think this is going to be a good thing. So stay tuned. Uh, give me a couple weeks and I will have a, uh, a video up with my first look at the Blade Runner uh, Advantage Pro XT because the X was not good enough, I guess. Uh, all right, Chris, Polly, uh, off topic, but what is the skate over your shoulder with the yellow laces? This one. I'm assuming these are the power slide swell road skates they are a um a swell boot with a 125 road skate uh road frame these things are a lot of fun to skate because they go super fast they are um 12.5 inches which is really long i don't know how long it is uh in millimeters but i'm assuming it's like wizard length there's no rocker so it's completely flat 
I haven't skated these in a while because honestly, I wasn't a huge fan of the way that they felt. Um, they're designed for going fast and going fast straight. And I have a really great um, trail that I could skate these on. The problem is that the way that they're set up is designed for skating. So if you're on the video, you can see that the, the line of the frame is on the inside edge of the skate. So if you compare this with um, like this uh, flying eagle, you can see the flying eagle, the toe of the boot is lined up perfectly with the line of the frame. Here, the toe of the boot is actually, the frame is actually on the inside edge of the boot. So the toe is not lined up with the wheels. What that's good for is if you're skating really fast and you're doing this thing called an under push or a double push. So when you're skating and you do a crossover, you get into this like this this typical um, I, you know the picture of somebody doing a really big push like when they're doing ice skating or they're doing speed skating and they've got one leg just extended all the way out now the other one and they're bent really low and they're pushing on the outside edge of the foot that's underneath them so not only are you pushing but you get another push with the leg that's underneath you. This sort of position is what helps them do that. So if you wanted a little help with an under push, you get skates that are like this and you're able to do a little bit more under push and stay on the edge a little bit longer and push out and get a little bit more angle to it. I am not a fan of that. I don't like skating differently and this was a really weird different feeling. I think these boots I don't know that I can make these boots work the way that I want them to. I want the frame to be lined up perfectly for me. And these are not. These feel different when I'm skating. I enjoyed skating them, but I feel like I'm going to have more fun skating those F7s with the 110 mil wheels. I'm not going to go as fast, but I'm going to feel better. It's going to be longer wheelbase than I'm used to with the PowerSight Imperials that I had before. It's still going to be 110 mil wheels, so 110s aren't as big as 125s, but they're sure big, and they're going to feel really good. You know, if I'm comparing my speeds to a 125, definitely I'm not going to go as fast, but I'm still going to have fun. I'm going to get a good exercise, and I'm not planning on going super long distances. I don't know that I need this. But we'll see. Um, you know, I'm excited to try out the uh, 110s this weekend and see what they feel like. If they don't work, I'm going to jump back on these and see what they feel like again. Um, I think this is a very specific thing. I think, you know, our friend Eric Cruz skates these skates. Uh, I think he has different frames now. Maybe he has the same frames. I'm not sure. But he skates these skates. Absolutely loves them. He kills with these skates. My friend Mark um, skates these skates kills with these skates it just doesn't feel right to me i like having my wheelbase right under my foot i don't like having it under my big toe you know that just doesn't feel right but good question i haven't talked about these in a long time i really need to again it's sad that they're up there just collecting dust they're very unique especially if you were somebody who just got back into blading and you've never seen a three-wheel skate and you saw this and you were like the heck's going on here it's a very purpose built purpose built setup and uh, it might be for you, it's probably not for me. <laughs> Adam, uh, Adam Levinson, you better put those King Souls grind plates on and hit a down rail. I don't know that I'm going to, I'm assuming you're talking about the Blade Runner skates. I don't know that I'm going to. Um, I'm going to do some urban stuff. I'll do some, you know, some gaps and some 360s and stair rides and stuff and see how they hold up. Um, I have a spot in mind that has all of those things that I can try. I just don't know. I don't know that I want to do those. That's the point. Like, I want to make sure that I can make videos for the audience. When I do aggressive videos, I know what the audience wants. When I do urban videos, I don't really know what the audience wants. Um, I'm not an urban skater. I'm trying to learn how to be an urban skater, but I, I don't really know what they want. When I'm doing trail videos, I know what people want and I'm learning how to make trail videos. I'm going to try to make another trail video this weekend. It's been a while. 
This is different. This is like a recreational review video. And I don't think they want to know how they hold up to doing down rails. <laughs> I think they want to know how they feel and how fast you can go. And probably that's it. You know, I'll get to a point where I can take off the brake and I'll try to do some slides, some parallel slides and some power stops and things like that. But really, I want to skate like normal people skate, not like aggressive people and not like speed people and not like urban people, just like normal people skate because that's the audience for those skates. And with that in mind, see if these are good skates or not. I think that they're going to be just fine. Um, they're not going to be as comfortable as my C CJ, you know, Sevas. Um, but they're going to be fine. They're probably going to be fine. I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, all right. I think I'm going to call it. Uh, my throat's starting to hurt again. And uh, I'm just getting over a... Uh, uh, being sick over the last week. So, uh, talking doesn't feel so good, but I, it's great to be with a uh, company. Uh, want to thank everybody for showing up again. I do this every other week. So, um, you know, you can subscribe on the YouTube and you'll get a push when I go live. Uh, but really, uh, follow me on Instagram. That's probably the best way. If you wanted to get more information, if you have questions after this, if there's something that you wanted to ask me that you never got around to, Always feel free to hit me up on Facebook or Instagram. I am more than happy to take some time out and talk. Um, and uh, yeah, until next time, uh, have a great time and uh, go out and skate.